Happy Saturday, everyone. So we are back now uh, for week 38. And I thought we'd have a little fun today on the table, creating, using a few different techniques to flush out this idea as we um, work, continue working in our um, journal, our 52-week challenge, 365 days in a life of the journal, I always like to say. So this week is Labyrinth of the Spiral. Yeah, so I find a lot when I look at symbols, ancient symbols, symbols that show up over and over and over again in on pottery, paintings, um, in the landscape, sculptures, on, on, on temples, buildings, churches. You know, there's a few that just are common. They just come up over and over again. And I find myself oftentimes wondering about the nature of that symbol and why it appears just, it's just timeless. And one of them is definitely the labyrinth and or the spiral, right? So the natural rhythm of mark making is the coiling and intertwining of lines to create webbing and circular undulating like formations. Depending on the tool, we can encourage more or less of this flow of the line. So the labyrinth is a logical outpouring of this movement of line and intention. Consider exploring the labyrinth as a form. This sometimes can get a little complex because I don't know if you've ever tried to draw a labyrinth, but she can be a little on the challenging side. <laughs> but you can go as simplistic or as complex as you desire. I'm going to just show you some simple ways that I love working with the spiral um, and this idea of this convoluted mark making. So it may surprise you how much it will involve the creative right side of the brain to figure out how one constructs traditional labyrinth, labyrinthic spirals and then progress to creating your own. These structures are, are, are the archetype of the goddess and the divine feminine, which is why you see these a lot at sacred sites like where there's water, um, at old churches and cathedrals you find them a lot. Um, and actually, you know, when you really kind of go down the rabbit hole of looking into labyrinths and spirals, um, it's amazing how they also have a technology to them and they were used to create like, um, flow of water part patterns down and up. It's amazing how there's this technology to how some of them are created. Um, and so we, you know, we also can say that the labyrinth is different from a maze because maze have a tendency to be squares, right? And labyrinths are tendency to be circles or more oval shapes. So yeah, let's just kind of think about, you know, a sacred shape like the spiral and the labyrinth and just have fun with it. You may decide to, um, just as you do some research, just kind of, you know, do some Google search and just see what comes up for you, what your own inspiration may be around it. Um, just look at images, pictures of them. You may decide you want to print some out and collage with them. Maybe um, using a pen or something, just kind of copy the formation of how that shape is going. And then maybe even use that shape. Um, in your work, a lot of times I like to use um, transparencies. And I'm going to show you a transparency that I've already sort of marked on. But you can literally put a transparency down over a photo and just kind of trace that pattern. And then maybe take that transparency and use it in your work. There is so many ways of approaching this um, that, you know, just kind of throwing out some ideas around it. But we're also going to do, when we come to the table, do a little jelly printing um, where I like to pay, play with the spiral and just some other really quick, easy techniques of stuff you already have in your studio to just have fun in your journal. So I'll show you the pages that I did um, this past week with our printables. I just love these. And I've just been even, you know, just creating more of these. I'm just having a good time sort of creating these old sort of bit botanical, herbal kind of book kind of things. You know, that's where I'm going for sort of like a cabinet of curiosity in a book form. Um, the other thing is, uh, just as a reminder, the link is below, but um, tomorrow will be the second in the series, this eight um, part series of collage and jelly printing. So some is just collage, some is just jelly printing, some is collage and jelly printing, but I get a lot of questions about collaging and or jelly printing. And so this eight week, uh, this eight 
part series that goes from now through December we'll be addressing a lot of those techniques and as you already know I've shared with you it's also flushing out um, my book um, on jelly printing that um, I, that I've already written and it's in the process of the next stages of it so I'll keep you all posted on that and so this series is really allowing me to help flush that book out by having an interactive you know we're on zoom sessions our first one was two weeks ago it was crazy crazy fun we had so much fun and you know so many of you all showed up and um and more and more have just been signing up um and i can't thank you all enough for just wanting to hang out with me and let me share with you a lot of my techniques and and one of um the ladies that were in the the uh this the workshop two weeks ago which was on collage intro to collage um i think it's the first time she actually had ever taken a class with me and she left a comment like oh my goodness you know all that you teach on youtube i just couldn't imagine that there was anything less left to teach and then you know i do this workshop with you and there's like so much more that you've had to share i just really took that compliment to heart thank you so much for sharing that with me because um it means a lot to me so yeah, we have a lot of fun. The, so tomorrow it's going to be collaging with jelly printing and with jelly prints. Um, and there's a, a several techniques I'm going to show. So if you want to sign up, the link is below. And if um, you want to reach out to me at info at and that's below. If um, financially things are a little tight and you would like a love offering, um, you can reach out to me or Eva and uh, many of you have been doing that and we're happy to support you at wherever you are um, in your finances and in your desire to do art because as far as I'm concerned the most important thing is that we just come together as community and create and I'm here to support you in that process so um, I just you know it's this idea of giving back as so many of you sign up for my workshops full price I have so many people who actually will pay more than what things um, actually than what I'm actually charging for for whatever I've had people just send me just just beautiful donation just to continue to support the work that I'm doing and it allows me to offer discounts and you know the ability for people to just give love offerings because I have people on all levels of the spectrum who are part of this community that are happy to give and share and so I just want to pass it along so anyway that's that um let's flip through the book so this is using the printables and these are some of um some of these like this one specifically is roxy creations um and i put the link underneath the videos before and it should be underneath i'll make sure it goes under this underneath this video but she gets these wonderful italian letters and what have you and i just love using them because they're just beautiful and i think they work so well with this month's printables and with this sort of old, you know, this uh, Vonich kind of um, flowers. <laughs> I just love these flowers. They make me happy. So, yeah, these are some of my papers. This is some of my papers there. Um, so here we are. This is one of the earlier um, Voynich flowers that we... Um, did the waxing on and you can see how you can see beneath it which is nice here again this is uh, one of Roxy's papers this is um, from our printables pack this is another one of her Italian papers I just think she has the best Italian papers out there in terms of printables packs there's bar none she just gets the best stuff and her her packs are really affordable too which is what I like about it as well um, and so this is with another print we know this I put you know just some fabric just to add sort of texture and that sort of old world look this is another one of my papers that I stain and um, kind of create that old world look to bits of linen of course just some Tracy Fox labels on there this is one of my labels I just kind of go through sometimes old documents and take the uh, the numbers out and just kind of create these sort of loose tags so yep that's from this past week oh this is um some silk it's actually a silk shirt I tore up this is a pretty pink <laughs> so I use it a lot um yep so there we are so that's from last week I am getting my new book out as we get ready to move forward so let me clear this away and we'll come down to the table 
Okay, so here's my new book. It's the same one that we were using before. I'm going to take the cover off because I take the covers off because they can just kind of get in my way. But you can see it's the same sort of Coptic binding. It's a beautiful flat lay, so no matter where we open it, it's nice and flat. We like that about it. So let's just get right to the beginning here. So what I thought I would do is... It's one technique that I love using these strips that I tear off of pages when I'm making my journals. Um, you know, when you want to kind of cut the size of that eight and a half, eleven page down to something that's more like um, eight and a half by ten or, or nine. Um, and these all have all kind of stainings on them. This is some of the calligraphy paper. So it's one technique that I love. To do with jelly printing that instantly just makes everything look like old like old world like you found it and uh you know somewhere like that in a flea market or something the other thing that we're going to do is just some really quick techniques of just working with simple spirals just simple mark making and then i just took um a sheet of paper I'll show you, well, yeah, I'll show you with this, but this is just a calligraphy paper that then I just coffee stained and, um, and did some spray dyes on. And then after I was done, I crumpled it. Um, and so you just get some really neat pattern making that you can use back down in collage. So we'll do some of that. Let me get, um, real quick. I can... I pulled it out but you know this is a calligraphy paper that I like to use so let's get a sheet and I'll show you real quickly because this is about showing you some techniques and we'll get at least one or two collages done in the journal but just you know kind of show you some things that I like to do so we have this let me just get um Um, wax paper. I'm going to work down here on the desk. I like to work on the wax paper so it kind of keeps things from getting too much. Um, so first of all, let's just get the sheet and just using a Sharpie, like any permanent marker. Um, I just kind of explore with making and I'll just kind of change the direction and just go off the page it just looks like you're literally just having fun you're just not thinking about it and you're just kind of creating these spirals these circles these sort of labyrinthic marks just kind of go over this is the, the calligraphy paper and I have links for this in the description. So we can do it with that. And then I like to grab like my ink tints. This is an in ink black. And do the same thing. Just as much of a just kind of doing over patterning. I like to make sure I go off the edges, so. Okay, so <clears throat> we have that. That's also while we're making our marks, I'm gonna take some of this acid-free tissue paper that is, um, is archival and the same thing, just kind of, you know, it, Yeah, don't worry about it. Just just have fun with maybe sort of making these marks on all sorts of surfaces. Something there that just keeps on catching. And it could look like real messy. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> because when you take and use sections of it, it's just amazing how 
much fun it is. And then I've done some of the same thing on my transparency paper. And then I just, you can see I've already cut a bit out of it, but then, you know, you just cut a small section out of it. And it's just amazing how just doing something like this on a lot of different paper surfaces, you can even take jelly prints that are not quite successful and just do this on top of them. And then when you cut bits and pieces out of them, um, they really just have a nice rich line and form to them that this is really cool to work with so let's um now what i want to do is just using some coffee um and that the, the ink tense pencil that i use on here the permanent marker is not going to bleed but that ink tense one is going to bleed and so So you can see how, I'll just pull it up some, you can see how the ink tense pencil is starting to bleed and that's just going to add some nice complexity to what we're doing and um, just really let that soak in and then I'm going to get, use some of the spray dye, just a little bit in the licorice want to get it like a little yeah just some some little spray dots you know so that you really can see the dot pattern and then I'm gonna get a little bit of um, the antique white or pearl white I love and just kind of spray that around and and then you just put it aside and let it dry. And once it's dry, you just kind of I just kind of wrinkle it up. You don't have to crinkle it. You can. You don't have to. But it's just nice to see the difference between the lines where you can see the ink tense is really bleeding. Like this is the ink tense right here. That pencil, it's bleeding where you can see that the the thin lines of the marker are staying. So wherever the lines look like they're bleeding and getting wider, that's the pencil. And the, all the thin lines our, our marker and just using two very simple things a magic marker and this is the Derwent um, ink tense these pencils let me see if I can get it to focus you guys know my camera is challenged when it comes to the focusing so I apologize but I just would need to buy another a different camera um, in order for that but you can see it there so um, these I get from Blick and they're like $2.99. I'm sure you can find them online or just about any store that sells um, pencils individually. You can get any kind of water soluble pencil. Um, I like these intense ink because you can see how they stay really dark um, even though they bleed with the water. Okay, so very simple, couple simple things and um, we have some interesting papers. And so that's basically, this is the exact same paper that I used there just now, but only dry. And this one, I didn't do the ink tents. It's just the marker. Alrighty, so let's, I'm going to keep these simple so we can get started. So what I want to do is on this first page here, I'm going to start off by gluing this one technique that I want to show you where you just can literally... You literally can take, um, let me just get this off. You literally can just take copier paper that you just stain, just coffee stain it. Um, and then taking these coffee stained pieces, so we'll take, we'll kind of maybe do this. So first of all, you take these coffee stain pieces and everything immediately looks um, it's right in the middle. It, all, it immediately kind of gives you this 
old world look. It already looks like old paper. It's just amazing how cutting them into strips, to me, visually looks more like an old piece of paper than if you just put a solid piece of coffee stained paper down. You don't get all the different variations of staining and this whole old world thing. So I'm big on, I wanna put this middle one down first. I'm sort of big on doing this where, a minute. I'll put this one in the middle. Take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, where is my hmm? Tell me I'm out of my I can't be out of. Boy, I went through another Giotto pretty quickly. Okay, so kind of just lining it up for where I want it to start. So I want this to be right there. Okay. So, I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down using whatever glue stick you have. I use the Giotto and the Uhu, you guys know that. And that's one of the things that in collage, the intro to collage, we talked of, I talked a lot, I get asked a lot about glues and why I use the glues and different things. So we talked a lot about glues and all the different types you can use in collaging. And that video, um, any of the videos from the series will be still up and um, you know so if you didn't get a chance to do it or weren't available on that date you can always go back and check them out and also um, flatten this down when you take the course they're always they're always available to you so you can always go back a lot of times uh, we'll go and put notes up or different things in the course that we think are relevant or become relevant um, and so I really try to keep it current. So let's put that piece down. So yeah, just have fun with it, especially the mark making. I always save these pages of, with this um, in this glue book, but I like those. Um, I forget the actual technical name <clears throat> for those. They actually have a name. Um, but I like those. So I save them so I can have them for collaging because they have nice numbers in them too. So that's what I'm tearing away. Okay. So let's go ahead and put this down. I like to try to flip things around and try to get the best points. I like this side. Okay. They're about the same, but I want to put that image, that bit at the top, so. So, yeah. So, you can even just coffee stain some paper and then purposely tear it in strips and then put them back together in various combinations. You'll be surprised at how I think just, they just even look more interesting and impressive as an old piece of paper than just, you know, putting the whole thing down. See, that's, that's coming along nicely. So this one we'll put here. I don't know why she's barking, but she's barking. So you can see this had some mark making on the back piece of it. But since I want to print on top of this, I'm going to put that down to the bottom because I want a nice clean surface to put this jelly print on. Okay. Alrighty. So that's one example there. And let's do another one. I'm kind of on the skip a page since I'm going to be printing on them uh, for you all. I just want to have one and then the next one. I'll fill this in during the week. But I love this, this how this just has a lot of mark making on it. So see, I want to put that down. Uh, 
think I'm going to move it over and put this here. Uh, let me just, I'm going to stop the video and check on the puppy just a minute. Okay, I'm back. So I just brought her in the studio with me because I think she was um, tired of being in her kennel. Though she wasn't in there that long, but she decided that uh, I think she had had enough. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put this down. So I'm going to use kind of this whole sheet. And this is the calligraphy paper. Like I said, the same stuff that we just did um, this on. And it's actually a good value. Um, I have I normally always keep the link for that below my video because so many I use it a lot and I get asked a lot. But I, you get like a whole pack of a hundred sheets in there for I mean it's a pack of a hundred sheets for um, six or seven dollars. It's not a lot at all, but it really is a decent quality. It's not the top of the line, but it's not um, the bottom either. So it's good mid range quality of. Um, the papers, I find it hold, they hold up neatly. They don't tear that easily. You know, things like that that you're looking at in papers. So, so I'll put this down. Alrighty. So it just kind of allows us to have that. And then we'll put this one down. This one I'm going to use the Giotto, I mean use the uh, the Uhu because this paper is a little thinner and I find that um, I find that you know it doesn't tear the paper since it's already kind of rips and it's a little thinner paper the Giotto can really grab it and sometimes it can tear it so that's when I use I always have a tendency to use the Uhu on thinner papers, more translucent papers, and the Giotto I use on heavier weight papers. Um, you know, papers that have more thickness to them, fabrics, things like that. So that's just a quick um, differentiation of why I used the two different ones. So we're going to overlap. Okay. Alrighty. We'll let that set up and let's go ahead and cut the top off of these. All right. Okay, and we'll get it off the bottom here. Alrighty, so I just kind of put this somewhere as a little sticky. Okay, oops, we got this top piece. Alrighty. All right, so you can see how these two just have just a really neat quality that just already gives it this sort of old world, you know, flea market found in a vintage kind of spot look to it. Now, let's see, what do I want to do next? We're going to do jelly printing, but I also just kind of want to do collaging. I'll do it right here. I just kind of want to do show you all a little collaging with some of these elements as well that we have here. So let's just have fun. Okay, I'm going to take a bit of this and I think I'll put this lighter bit at the top. Okay, so let's just go ahead. I'm going to rip. Like I said, what makes this work is when you just kind of grab a section. So let's say if I take this section here for the top. Okay, so we'll take about this much.
Well, that's just a piece of tissue paper that we've kind of So let's go ahead and put that down. And so the whole idea is just kind of to take one, one form like the spiral, um, this labyrinth, you know, and just see how many ways you can work with it, um, design with it. Um, and you could use the printables with it. You can use other, your other jelly prints and stuff with it. Oh, and the other thing is, yeah, in this, in this month's, um, that's what I meant to say. Hold on, let me just get this down. I'll show you all. So in this month's printables, you all know that these papers papers like these are in there where I have the same mark making on them. So you can definitely take your printables and actually tear them into strips. Let me just put my hands, my hands on my printables here. <clears throat> so like we have I need to print some more out, but I think I have some in here that have the pattern on them. I've been using these. Okay, here's some. Well, well that's the half pages. There's a page. Are oh, these these are different? Yeah. So you can actually take the printables and you know, do a similar thing, just literally can just rip them into strips. And then you see that when you go to put them down, you know, when you play with these strips, see all of a sudden they just, auto they mat automatically just start looking different because we've started just mixing up those patterns. Um, I'm not taking the time to cut the white off and everything, but you can see how just putting them down will allow you to have, get this sort of similar effect, which just makes them look different already. Just cutting them makes them look different than just, just putting a whole piece down like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you definitely can use the printables out of this month. And then those of you who have the printables over the, um, the series of months know that I always have some kind of stained papers and, you know, in, in my packs. So just go back over some of those old packs and pull stuff out to be able to kind of do a similar thing. So let's cut this off. So if you can't go out and stain them, you know, then just use the pack. Okay, so right there already you see how this this pattern just kind of like starts looking different than the whole full sheet of it. And I'll put some of this down. Let's see. I want to just kind of rip this across. I want that ripped edge. Okay, and then here, I'm just going to go ahead and trim this. Okay, so just doing some collaging here. I see, I love those patterns together. Wow, that's good. Um, so let's go ahead and just glue this down. Okay. So I'm going to start in this corner here. 
because I want to be able to I'm going to kind of scrunch it and I'm going to put it down at this edge because when you know when you get the glue on it it kind of pulls the wrinkles out a bit and I still want so you see I put it down so there's like a gap in between there so I have this edge and this edge and then I kind of can just crinkle this down because I want I still want like the wrinkles in it and the and the and the creases if you don't want that of course you know you can just smooth it out okay so I like that and let's see so we you know we can piece things back down there like that or I may um, one of the things I love to do too is just kind of sort of make this oh I like this this to me is like really <clears throat> very sort of much just like a labyrinth so I'm going to cut the uh, the edges off where because I want it to end I want it to end with the lines going off the side so I just kind of cut that off and then what we're going to do is let's just glue this down right over top of it and we kind of just created this sort of abstract <clears throat> kind of design using just basically three different types of um, papers that had the same the exact same mark making on it. So I'm going to glue this down using some of the um, Fabri-Tac. Okay. And the Fabri-Tac dries pretty clear. for putting this acetate down. I don't smush it too much. I just let kind of like let it start drying. And then as it dries, you can come back and squish a little bit more. That way you don't just smooth out all of the um That way you don't smooth, you know, kind of press your glue out onto your papers that you don't want to have the glue on. <laughs> so here we are. So that's kind of like where you can just see pattern over pattern over pattern. Just fun, you know, just kind of have fun just going and find all. And if you don't have the sheet protect, you know, uh, if you don't have um, transparencies, you can just get the sheet protectors that you put, um, you know, papers in. If you have any old ones of those, glassine envelopes, the, um, the, the envelopes that come in the mail, like all the, the junk mail we get. Just pull those glass scenes out and scribble on those. Anything that kind of gives you a transparent or a translucent surface, um, you can kind of recreate this kind of effect with. So it's just fun. Now, let's go on to have some fun with the jelly, the jelly plate. So one of the things that I love to do is do this glazing. So I'll use like like this Martha Stewart is a champagne. So this Martha Stewart metallic in the champagne. Now you can get this at Hobby Lobby, at Michael's, um, Joann's, just about any place that sells the Martha Stewart paints. These are just a craft paint. I think these are like a couple dollars. So I'm just kind of getting a very light layer and I start off by just putting just layers very thin glazed layers down now I like it that my plate will have stuff on it because it'll start releasing all that extra stuff you know and just give you extra mark making and it just adds to you know things looking old and uh, sip it a little bit down. Don't need a lot for glazing. So 
So you just kind of, what this does is it allows you to kind of get sort of a glazed, a painted, you know, surface down. Um, but you're not, but you still can see the paper underneath. The goal is to, for us to still see the stained paper, the old paper, you know, kind of idea. Okay, so I meant to really start printing on the first one so that, that one can be drying. So what I'm going to do is once I kind of put this down, I'm going to put a uh, piece of wax paper between it because the thing about it is that um, it's not it's not wet, but I just want to protect it from. the um, you know just protecting it from the other side over there oh I love it so see how we just got some interesting kind of marks and just overlapping of paint just to kind of give it a nice grunge painterly and we're really building up a lot of painterly layers without a lot of hard work because we started with this the old paper look anyhow if you know if you try to do this on white paper it would not be the same, right? So starting off with some coffee stained papers and stuff, always a good idea. So let me just go ahead and... So on this one, I'm gonna do a similar thing. I'm just, I think I'm gonna use a gold. No. Where's my champagne? I had a champagne over here somewhere. Oh, right here. Let me just take a look at it. This is Craft Smart. This is a champagne. Um, it's more silvery so let's try this one so once again I'm going to stuff on my jelly plate this one is a little bit more platinum the Martha Stewart is a little more more of a rose kind of champagne if I had to say this one is a little more platinum so just get some metallics in the different in the different product lines and just play with them. So this one I'm gonna just kind of do top to bottom, sort of make a strip. You could literally do the whole page if you want. I just kind of like to make it look like there's print make, making on some old paper. So that's why I kind of do it like sort of like this. But you could do it any way you want. So we're going to do a bit here. Okay. So now I have, I like to use the fluid acrylics for this particular technique. Um, so I have a quinacridone burnt orange. I have my quinacridone it was a gold. So now this is a Utrecht colors and they're cheaper than the golden, but I wouldn't compare them. I wouldn't say these two are because this is quinacridone burnt orange and this is quinacridone nickel azo gold. They're completely different colors. But if you're looking for a cheaper fluid acrylic, the Utrecht brand, which I get at Blick, is decent. This is quinacridone gold, but honestly, I'll show you all. Let's do it on a piece of paper. They're not the same. <laughs> but, you know, it's nice to do comparatives. I like doing that. So let's go ahead and put... I'm going to put um, the quinacridone... No, I'm going to burn orange. I want it to be the quinacridone gold. So I'll put that down here on one half. And I'll put the the goldens on the other half just to show you all it's always nice to kind of see what paints do especially when they're expensive especially so let me just go ahead and smooth this out it's not a bad substitute but it's not the same It's 
kind of still more of a clay color and it's not as um, translucent if I had to say what the difference is so let's see if I print on this page if you'll be able to see what the difference is but if you can run across the Blit, the Utrecht acrylics fluid acrylics they're not bad and they're like I don't remember maybe three or four dollars a bottle where this can be eight dollars or so so maybe they're like half the price okay so you can see here the difference see how this is the the goldens it's more translucent it's a little more you can see the glazing of it nicely where this one's it it's more clay I, it almost has more of a matte look where this has more of a a sheen to it and it's a more of a clay color I'd say but it's nice so you know just a little quick illustration <laughs> okay so now let's go ahead and do this mark making that I love to do so um, let me just go ahead and get some quinacridone um, the golden so what I do is I normally just kind of put a dot down like that and then I just like to use the back of a, of a paintbrush literally I just get a paintbrush and uh, take some of it off a little bit too much off. and then literally I just kind of start moving my brush I mean the point around the jelly plate this is the technique I've done this for years because I just love making circles and these sort of spirally things and this is how I make them and then you know you just kind of keep on moving it around the plate until you kind of get the shape that you want and I kind of like let it move out so that you know I kind of get that line to it and then let's just take it and put it right over top of our original stain bit right so we have like a little acrylic surface to put it on top of and you can do this with any shape of course we're playing with the spiral but you can do this with any shape you could just do this with stencils doesn't matter oh I love it so see how we get that effect oh, I love it so then what I'm gonna do is I'll just kind of off print that over there and then what I like to do is I just need to blot so I'll just get a, a bit of this I like to blot my circles and I don't really like a whole lot of extra paint down so I'll blot it and just pull a little bit of it up okay so then what we can do the same thing you can play with different colors so I'm gonna get the goldens iridescent bronze kind of do the same thing you know you can just kind of do a little just a little movement of it and then let's just go ahead and create a spiral and just build up you know just having fun you could literally do just spirals all over circles all over the plate just circle 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 and print with it I won't overlap it. Okay. And then, you know, you just kind of play with it. You come back with a uh, paintbrush. And I just like to put more mark making in. Just more mark making in the... Um, I just kind of pulling up light amounts of it and kind of keep on scraping and just kind of creating this this print that you know you just start having some depth of texture too so you're going to see the the um the quinacridone coming through you have some gold and then I have this paint here I don't want to 
I don't want to lose it so let's just put it right over top of this so that way we still have we're not just throwing our paint away and you are just getting you're just transferring some mark making onto the paper here so that works get some gold over there okay so now I want to finish with just a little little bit of white let's see if I can so it's the golden um, in the zinc white I just love their fluid acrylics. I do use theirs a lot. So I just want a little bit. Okay. So just the littlest amount. Because I just want a white circle to kind of lay over top of what we have here. clean us off a little bit so that okay that should do it so we're going to put this right over top so we're just kind of creating this idea of a labyrinth as we build up texture and color so we see how we that and then we can just kind of scrape back into it just a little bit oh I love it so you know it's just another way to kind of deal with texture color pattern so since I have this white on here I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of that on here too and we're just kind of transferring so the next time you even use this piece of paper you've just built up more color so There we have that. And um, I'm going to let this dry a bit and then we're going to come back and just have some fun on this one as well. We'll do something else. I thought I would just do a quick insert so you all could see how that paper dried. I didn't want to not show you. So you can see it just really dried very interesting and with all the sort of the blurred lines from the Ink Tense pencil and the staining. So you can really make some very interesting paper by just doing some very simple techniques. I know a lot of times people think mark making is like so complicated because it looks like that when you take it and take bits and pieces and then use them in collaging. But it's like so easy just to create this really beautiful paper with just this convolute, convoluted lines some easy coffee staining. You can do it right at your desk. Um, and the backs even look interesting as well. You know, you just get this nice subtle pattern of texture and color. So just wanted to do a quick insert to show you all that. Okay, so back to our jelly printing. Okay, so we're back. This is nice and dry. So I'll just kind of hold it up so you can sort of see sort of all the texture. So this layer of... Um, color and pattern and um, and sometimes I'll you know I'll even add my sumi inks to it using the jelly plate but we're gonna stop there because I want to do this other one there's just it's just so much you can do I want you just to kind of play around and have fun with your jelly plate um, or just whatever you have to make patterns with so now I have the black fluid acrylic and what I want to do is just I want to make these circle patterns. So they kind of lay next to each other. And I just kind of want to maybe print this grid of kind of spiral circles, you know. You don't need a lot of paint and you know you can use using the back of your paintbrush really uh, allows you to move this around I'm 
trying to work fast so this up here doesn't dry because I'm kind of so let's go ahead and just kind of put a series of circles down let's see what we we end up with I don't know just playing just showing you how you can just use your jelly plate to just do small pattern making. Oh, I like that. I like how I just kind of have these faint layers. So let's keep on going. I can even use, um, let me see. What do I want to do? I could repeat this pattern. Let me just, let me see. What do I want to do? Let me just think in real time here with you all looking at me I want to keep on building up this sort of pattern just a circle just working like we're doing here but just working differently on the plate I know what I can do let me just put one more circle down let me just see if I I'll just paint it right on there then I want to kind of come back and so just using the back of my paintbrush kind of flush these out a little bit more so I really want to get a little bit more of a circular texture to it you know where we're actually just kind of maybe combining these circles and just kind of working like it's an old print almost you know like when you do it on this background I just think you're just already adding just a, such a nice layer of texture that wouldn't exist if you're just using a white piece of paper and everything starts off so fresh. I like the mark making that comes from using the back of the paintbrush. Yeah, that's good. So this really flushed those. So you can kind of like put the jelly printed down so that you kind of get, you see how those layers are just building up. So you can sort of see more of the printed layer and then just adding um, textures to the top like this is nice. Um, let me see. What do I want to do? So I think what I'm going to do is let's just do a, a series of gold ones underneath. I think I'll just use my jelly plate as a palette and do more of this. Oh, yeah. So mark making over top of the jelly print surface but the nice thing because we have that glazing down here it's like paint to paint so you're really able to kind of move this acrylic around the page without uh, absorbing right into the um into the paper like it would if we hadn't glazed it so you can see how those are laying down there nicely just fun. I think I'll come back with some dots in the middle of our circles just to kind of flush this little print out. And it's just that easy just to have fun and just kind of create this really neat, just a real elegant, simple little print. You can see the dots. It'll everything is going to dry so much stronger. So I'll be able to show you next week when it's dry. But just having fun with circles, labyrinths. You know, just this idea of scribbling. This, it, I guess, that's really what I want to get across. The idea of spiraling, scribbling, loose movements. It's not like you're trying to make something happen. You're just kind of working with it very loosely. Um, and you know just on various backgrounds and just have fun with it so hopefully you found this little session 
inspirational and uh, just another way to think about your jelly plate and you know just working and we've kind of created three completely different type of pieces but still being inspired by the circle the spiral you know the movement of line and mark making just to create with so like this I just love the idea of mono printing and this sort of one-off prints that you get Alrighty, so I will leave you there. If we wanted to kind of even add more to it, we could literally take this same thing and then I'm gonna do it just so you guys can see what my, where my thinking is. We can just take a bit of this. I wanna get some that I know has this gold on it. So I'm gonna get this bit. And then just just want to add just a really thin sliver. Okay. And I want to finish this off by gluing it. So I'll get my ooh for this. Okay. And let's just kind of put this right underneath here. Just to kind of finish this print off. And, uh... Yep, just adding an element of interest. And see, we kind of took that same mark making that same line just to finish it off. I love it. And that little bit of gold is perfect. Ah, perfect. I love it. So, yeah, just have fun and um, think about the, you know, do a little, just do a little digging around on the internet and see what else you can learn about labyrinths or spirals that you maybe didn't already know. The significance of them, how they were used a lot in architecture and pottery and stuff. And just see what new inspirations you can draw from the simple spiral this week um, as you kind of like use this, um, this iconic form in your work. And maybe just have a different relationship to it and a different... Um, and just come up with different, you know, techniques or different ways to create with it. So I'll leave you all here. Um, thank you all for joining me. As always, if you enjoyed the videos, please thumb it up. If you're new to the community, please hit the, the bell and all so that you can get all the notifications. And, uh, oh, we're still working on Eva's, um, the book, you know, The Herlot of Alonia. You guys have been amazing. So she went to, to number 44 in Australia as of this taping number two in Canada I think she said she was in the upper couple hundreds in Britain and she's in the upper maybe six hundreds here in America and that's from being in the three and four thousands so every time you all download um, when you buy the printables you automatically are being sent a link please 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 even if you've gotten the link please just go ahead and and um and claim it, download it, because it's the downloading of it that counts. Um, and then you can read it at your leisure, because you know it's a Kindle book, it's always gonna be there. Um, but in doing so, let's just see by the end of the month, we wanna make her in the top 100 here in America, um, as well, the British, the, the, the Australians, you guys are just, um, you know, just making it happen. And, and here in America too, because quite frankly, it's a larger book base. Um, and so she was further down. So for her to be the 3000 to the 600, that alone rocks, um, and shows the efforts that we've made here in the States. So let's just keep it up. And, um, the link for the, for the printables are below. It's always $6. And then, um, I'm seeing to it that I'm paying for 
the the Kindle version of it for you guys to get it. Many of you have bought the hard copies. You've been doing the audibles, all that's so much appreciated. Um, but yeah, so just wanted to give you the update on that. That's doing really good. And boy, is it power in community. Just for us to be able as artists to support each other like this, just think that every time we all are doing something in a community like this, if um, I'm always, you know, please let me know if you're having an exhibition, if you're having something that people, we can come attend locally, or if it's an online exhibition and you know, you need people to say that they like your art, let us know, please. Always reach out to me at info at Robin McClendon. I will let the community know. And I know that, you know, it's just power in numbers and supporting each other. And I'm here to support anything that you guys are doing. Just, just got to let me know. Alrighty. So those are all the updates tomorrow. Um, intro. I mean, not it's jelly printing, um, with, um, collaging, using collage and jelly printing together. Some similar to the kind of like what we've done here, this idea of mix it, mixing the mediums and there's just a lot of techniques I'm gonna share with everyone. So that's everything. Um, so if you haven't signed up, the link is below to sign up. Each, the individuals are $50. But like I said, if um, that's challenging, reach out to me at info Robin McClendon. Let me know what you can do um, as a love offering and um, I'm just, you know, I'm paying it forward. So love you all. Take care. Have a beautiful, beautiful Saturday. And I shall see you again either tomorrow in the Zoom workshop or next Saturday. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye.